without Hattie, nothing matters. And nothing will ever matter again. I slink down, gazing helplessly out the door. When the food lady and fetch man come back inside, they practically trip over my lifeless body. My muscles wouldn't move if I bribed them. Which is apparently what my humans are trying to do. Fenway, food lady coos, sweetest cream. She strides into the eating place, gesturing at my supper dish, like I could have possibly forgotten it's there. Fetch man waves a piece of kibble on my nose. I cannot bear to sniff it. He presses his hand against my side. As I let out a deep sigh, he smells relieved. They head into the lounging place. I hear a familiar click and sounds from the flashing screen. Later, Fetch man comes back and opens the sliding door. Fenway, he says more authoritatively this time. When I don't bother getting up, he carries me outside and waits until I water one of the bushes. Through the darkness, we both steal glances at the giant tree, but there's no sign of her, just a nasty squirrel skittering along the side fence. Fetchman shrugs and brings me back inside. When he closes the door, I press my nose into the screen, as if I'll suddenly see her climbing down the tree and running back to me. I can't suppress a whimper. Fenway, Fetchman says with a sigh. He pulls me away from the door and deposits me in the hallway. Out comes the gate. The lights go dark and I know hallway for a very long time. Eventually, my eyelids get heavy. I close them for just a second, and then I'm out in the dog park with the biggest hot dog I've ever seen. It's the size of our car, and it's glistening with hot dog goodness, just waiting for me to race over and take a bite. Wowee, how did I get so lucky? I can't wait to sink my teeth into it. I go to chomp one end, and suddenly, the whole hot dog disappears. Hey, where did it go? It's completely vanished. Searching for it everywhere, but over at the fence, I see a flicker of pure horror. Squirrels lined up on the fence. Uh, more squirrels than I've ever seen. They're enormous, gigantic. It's the scariest sight ever. One very fat, very nasty squirrel leads the pack. His belly is huge and bulging. His teeth are long and thin, like, dripping with squirrely saliva. I can't look at him without shuddering. He is the definition of evil. Chipper, chatter, squawk. The evil squirrel screeches. He scurries down into the dog park, and the rest of the pack follows. They're invading. The dog park is for dogs. I open my mouth to frighten them away, but no sound comes out. What happened to my bark? I'm speechless. Pretty soon, the dog park is completely packed with gigantic squirrels, but they're not teasing or taunting or daring me to chase them. They don't even notice me. What's up with that? Clearly, they have a plan. The evil squirrel scampers over to the giant tree. The others race after it. They shoot up the trunk and into the leafy leaves. They've headed for the squirrel house. A shiver runs from my snout to my tail. Patty is up there. The evil squirrel bears his fangs. The others raise their claws. They are about to enter the house. Patty's in danger. The squirrely face pops out of the little window. Her eyes wide with fear. I know those eyes. It's Patty. She's turned into a squirrel. I wince in horror, every hair on my coat shuddering with disgust. My sweet, lovely Heidi, my favorite short human of all, has become one of my mortal enemies. I gaze out across the dog park. Heidi's eyes are full of terror. She's trapped. She's afraid. She needs me. Squirrel or no squirrel, she's still Heidi. I'll never stop loving her. Especially now that she's in trouble, those gigantic squirrels have her surrounded. There's only one thing to do. I have to save her. There must be a way. If only I could bark, or at least if I could run. Or can I? My legs won't move. Come on, boys, let's go. They will not budge. They must be attached to the ground. It's worse than being trapped. I'm officially useless. I can't just stand here. Time is running out. A pack of gigantic squirrels is perched on a branch, which is bending and bending and bending. And I hear a loud rushing whooshing and then crack. Or is it click? Whatever it is by a pounding, splattering sound like sheets of rain. And boom, kaboom, I shiver. It's also terrifying. I can hardly stand and listen, but then I hear different sounds. Tip, tap, tap. My eyes pop open, but suddenly everything is dark. I can't bark, I can't move, and now I can't see. And hey, the grass feels exactly like cushy carpeting. It is cushy carpeting. I'm no longer in the dog park. I'm back in the house, in the hallway outside the eating place. Is this real or is it a dream? In any case, there's no time for questions. The tip tap tapping is getting closer. It's inside the sliding door. It's moving into the eating place. 
Good thing there's nothing wrong with my hearing. Rain pelts against the window. A light flashes outside. For an instant, I can almost make out a large, lumpy, bumpy creature. Inside the eating place, it smells like damp tree bark and wet leaves. This can only mean one thing. It's that evil squirrel. He comes inside to stop me from saving Hattie. Like he actually could. Sure human or squirrel, she's still my beloved Hattie. Nothing can stop me from saving her. Boom, kaboom. I leap up. Hey, I can move. Out of my way, squirrel. I bark. I have a job to do. Hey, I can bark. But the evil squirrel is not intimidated. His shadowy shape keeps slinking through the eating place. Determined to stop him. Not if I stop him first. I'll charge right in and show him who's boss. But when my paws cross the threshold, I realize there's another very big problem.